Now, I'm not a massive numbers guy, so for all of you maths theorem nerds out there, you're going to love this one. And for the rest of us, this episode's also about Futurama, so that's pretty cool too. And if you don't like that, well, you can bite my shiny metal ass. Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and every time we watch a TV show where there is a scientific concept that needs to be explained, it's normally done mainly for entertainment purposes or to perhaps move along a story point. Of course, is the point. I mean, it's a TV show, it's meant to be trying to entertain you. And the actual science behind what they're saying probably isn't that accurate. However, something I found out quite recently was that the popular TV show Futurama has a maths theorem in one of the episodes which is not only 100% accurate, but what's even more impressive is that this theorem was made specifically for this episode of the show. This is pretty interesting stuff, but we've got to rewind a little bit. Futurama is an animated TV show by Matt Groening and ran from 1999 on and off until 2013. Based in the not-so-distant future of the 31st century, the show follows the crew of Planet Express, an interplanetary delivery company. The show being set in the future, of course, delves into a lot of different sci-fi topics and scientific themes and ideas. This includes Professor Farnsworth, a brilliant inventor and scientist who plays a very critical role in the show. And yes, I know that you read that in his voice. With Professor Farnsworth creating inventions for the show, the writers took great care to try and not just throw things in, and where they could, try and provide some scientific explanation or basis for everything they put into the show itself. Some of which was not completely grounded with reality, but if you can suspend disbelief somewhat when watching the show, it certainly gets you more invested with how the characters get from point A to point B. In one episode, called The Prisoner of Bender, the Professor makes a mind-swapping machine, and of course this leads to hilarious antics where the various characters go into the machine, swap minds, and then are unable to get back to their original bodies. Hilarity ensues, but to actually get back to where they all started, this required some math, and it is this which is the pretty genius part about this whole episode. Yes, that one subject I absolutely hated at school and dropped it with a passion as soon as I could is actually something that really fascinates me in this particular context. Now, with the resolution of the episode being down to maths, the writers took a tremendous effort to try and make it as real as possible, and to use a theorem which actually was related to the issue the characters were facing. So what better way to do that than just to create your own theorem, specifically for the show specifically for this episode, and specifically to solve this singular problem. This all sounds a bit too good to be true. Well, the team were fortunate enough to have Ken Keeler writing on the show, who not only wrote for Futurama, but he also held a PhD in applied mathematics. So if they were going to get the help of anyone to do this, this was the man they needed. Being able to have a plot point or a plot twist in an episode like this based on actual maths theorem, as far as I'm aware, is the first time something like this has ever been done in television. The fact that they've had to specifically make this theorem for this episode. I mean, this theorem didn't exist beforehand and, well, the only reason they did it was to fix the problem in the episode. What I did find so interesting about this was that it goes against one of the core beliefs held by the writing staff, as outlined by the show's executive producer, David Cohen, who said that entertainment trumps science. Meaning, if the team were ever working on an episode where a scientific principle was involved, the entertainment factor would always take priority, because at the end of the day, that's the main reason they're doing this. However, for this particular episode, they decided to flip that on its head. One thing I worry about is that when we purposefully present inaccurate science in Futurama in the name of entertainment that viewers may hold against us. We do have a genuine respect for science, and we're trying, when we can, to raise the level of discussion of science on television. If we fail sometimes, I hope people will still appreciate the frequent attempts to bring real science into the show. I apologise in advance for any failures in the future because I'm sure that there will be many more, hopefully entertaining failures. So yeah, with that in mind, this is still quite a unique thing to happen in writing. 
So, just to go back to the episode, the various characters have swapped with each other so many times that it becomes impossibly hard to figure out who needs to swap with who to get back to their original bodies, as this just seems like a complete mad puzzle of so many people involved. And with the help of the Harlem Globetrotters, they managed to figure out a way to do this, which just the fact that they had these guys in the episode I still find is absolutely bloody brilliant, but, you know, entertainment and all. It's not quite as simple as just swapping back to your original body, however, as you can only switch bodies once with the same pair of people. So they needed an equation to prove that there were enough switching bodies around. Everyone will eventually end up as who they really are, hence why maths was the only way to solve this problem. Okay, so what's the actual solution here? Well, regardless of how many people you have swapped from body to body to body, you need an extra two variables to make sure that everybody swaps with someone to get back to your original body. Meaning that they just needed two extra people who hadn't yet swapped to make this all work. This is where the Globetrotters Bubblegum and Sweet Clyde Dixon step in. Having not swapped prior and assuming that two people cannot switch back with each other after the original switch. Yeah, so you with me so far? Look, you just have to be ready for this because I'm about to throw a big wall of text at you. Right, in the actual episode itself, it shows all of the characters doing the various switches in very quick succession, so if you were to stop it and pay attention, you can actually figure out who swapped with who to get back to their original bodies. In the actual episode, it's done very quickly, but I've managed to break it down a little bit to show you swap by swap what happens. Right, you ready for this? It's going to be a lot of text, so you best be ready. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here it is. This is the 13 swaps necessary to get everybody back into their original bodies. You may want to pause the video if you want to take a further look. Okay, so something else I said earlier was that the theorem they used in the episode has actually been proven, and yes, that is the case here. And I'm not gonna go into loads of detail with this, mainly because I'm personally not at liberty to fully explain how this works because I can barely put two and two together, let alone this math theorem. If you are interested in the specifics, it is online, so you can check it out yourself. But yes, the same proven theorem which makes all of the swaps work is the same theorem written on the blackboard in the episode, which is a nice added touch. So yeah, that's a pretty sweet fact about one of my favourite TV shows. And it may very well have been that you watched the episode before but never quite realised how in-depth or how accurate this actually is, which I thought was really, really interesting. And of course, big, big props to the writers of the show for taking the time and effort to go out of their way to do this. I mean, they could have just thrown in some easy plot device to fix this, but the fact that they went a step further, I think is very much appreciated by the fans. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. Look, like I said, I'm not a numbers guy, I'm more of a words guy, so when it comes down to maths, my brain just fries in about five seconds, so I think I'm gonna have to go take a lie down. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.